It's Cash here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to use ranks from your group to basically do stuff in your game. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to have to have a group. And if you do have a group, go to the group page. Uh, but if you don't, you can create a group by going to the groups page and pressing create group. Now what we're going to do is copy the group ID by selecting the little numbers in the URL and pressing copy after right clicking or pressing control C. Then create a script in Roblox Studio and serve a script service and we're going to name this script manage ranks. After you've done that, create a variable called local group ID equals to and then paste in the ID you copied. All right, now what we're going to do is get the player service. So type in local players equals to game.players. Now we're done with that. Just do function get rank. And that's going to create the rank for the player so we can get them a team. Because what we're, we're going to aim for this project is get people or get players to have their own team based off their rank. So if I was an owner, which I am, it would, whenever I join the game, give me that rank. So let's go back to Roblox Studio, and we're going to create a parameter for this. So type in players.playeradded, connect function, or not connect function, connect get rank. Now that we're done with that, this will connect, when, uh, this will connect the function whenever a player joins. So to get the player that joined, just type in player, or PLR for short, in the function. Now we have the player that joined. After you've done that, we can start scripting the actual code. So let's get started. Basically, we have to do a couple things. And these things are going to be get the rank from the group that the player has, get the role from the group, and then switch the team to the role that they have. Um, but a really quickly, a thing that we're going to do is we can create the teams that we're going to need. So it's really easy to do. It just takes a little long. If you go to roles, this is how many teams I have. You might only have a couple, but you just want to create a team for every uh, or create a team for every role that you have that you want to add. So the owner, the co-owner, developer, whatever you want to add, just make a team. And after you've done that, paste it into teams or just put it into teams once you made it. And then you can make sure you change the colors and turn it all to auto assignable false, which is off. And I already did this. And I also have the rank that uh, you're gonna have to add. So in each team, create a value, int value, and make it a name it rank and change the value to whatever the rank is of that role. So owner would be 255. So if I went to owner, the rank would be 255. And yeah. So basically, create a team, name it whatever you want, owner. That's going to be the name of the role or the rank. And add an int value, put in the rank um, value that's right here into here and then make sure you name it right then finally uncheck auto assignable except if you have a guest one check that auto assignable and go to rank and name put that as zero all right so now what we're gonna do is get the rank so we're gonna do local player rank equals to player get rank in group group ID and then local player uh, role equals to player get role in group now you don't need to do this one but it, it you can do it either way it really doesn't matter but I prefer doing it this way because it's just um, well I mean it doesn't matter but this is just sticks to values this one just sticks to names so just do these and then we can just do print player.name so we know which player we're talking about 
and print the player rank and then the player role. So once we press play, you're gonna see a couple things. It says Cash the King 255 owner. So it says I'm the owner, I'm an owner row, and uh, my name's Cash the King, and my rank is 255. But if I was a guest, which it says, it would be zero. Now what we're going to do is make it actually do something. So uh, what we're going to do is just put that down there, just for a second though, and create a couple spaces just to be organized. So what we want to do is make it so it changes our team to whatever role we are. So we can do for IV or I team in pairs. And this is a for loop. So basically it runs through everything in this or whatever we put in in pairs. So we're going to do game.teams get children, not get teams because we're getting these children so we can get the rank. But if you're doing just um, player role and not rank, then you can, it doesn't really matter what you do. It All I'm saying is it's getting this and it's seeing how it can find it. So if you want to get it by the name, you can just do uh, if team.name, but I'll show you what I mean. It's probably hard to understand. Anyways, we're going to do get children and then do and press enter and also for team. This just means all the teams that it's um, like for each team, I equals each, and automated bot. It's that's one of them, so that's the team that it's talking about. Okay, so it goes through each team. So let's do team or local team rank equals team dot rank. Okay, and we're gonna do if player rank is equal to team dot rank then and also team dot rank dot value then player dot team equals to team now we're done with that if we press play it should change our team and it says we are owner let's go nice so uh, it says that we're owner now and now it changed our team so it works perfectly and the other way I was talking about that you could do is instead of adding all the rank values, you could just do if player role, that's right here, equals to team dot name, then do the, and that's like the exact same thing, it doesn't really matter, and it works the exact same. And that's actually the easier way to do it, but I just prefer doing it the rank way, and then you could just literally get rid of all this and make it small, but I like to do it this way. You guys can do it the easier way if you want, but um, that's just the way I do it. Uh, yep, there we go. So now that we're done with that, um, that's basically it. That's the whole thing we're aiming to do. But I'm also going to add a twist. So let's make it a door for the owner door. So if I'm an owner, then it works, but if I'm not, then it doesn't work basically. So let's add a little local script actually because this is only running on the client and we'll call this owner door and we're just gonna scale this up. Not that big, but you get the point. So we'll say this is the door that we're trying to get through. And we can make it like yellow or neon, just to make it look cool like an owner door. Make sure can collide is on and anchor's on. And then in this local script, we'll call it owner manage. So uh, we're gonna do local player equals game.players.local player, local team equals player.team. And we can do while wait, actually just get rid of team. And we're gonna do while wait do if player dot team equals to um is equal to game dot teams find first child owner 
which is that. Then we're gonna do script dot parent dot can collide equals to false. Else script dot parent dot can collide equals to true. And I did two equal signs, just make sure that's one. And now if we press play here, it'll work. So if we go over to the door and with the owner, which it says we are, uh, it is not letting us through. So let's see what's going on here. If player team equals to game dot players, uh, game dot teams, find first child owner, then can collide equals false, else script dot parent can collide equals true. So I guess the reason it's not working is probably this right here. So let's do if uh, player dot team dot name equals to owner and then crown um, does that work oh it has that there we go so we can try that now we might get another error actually uh, nope no errors but and it's still not working. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're gonna fire client. I'm gonna teach you guys how to fire client, okay? So we'll do this. Game or local event equals game dot storage. And we go into replicate storage and create a remote event. We're gonna call this owner door. Okay, and event dot um, on client event. Make sure you do replicate storage dot owner door on client event. Connect function and call this uh, true or call this value. And if value equals to true, then script dot parent dot can collide equals to false and then we can do else script dot parent dot can collide equals to true there we go and then if we go to manage ranks we can do if player dot team equals or if player rank equals team rank blah 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 then blah 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 so we can do if player dot team equals to uh, game dot teams dot find or equals to find first child uh, owner then game dot okay, storage fire or uh, owner door fire client player true else game dot create storage dot owner door fire client player false let's try this and now if we um, there might be an issue with the actual door itself can collide if we turn that off it works uh, so the reason it's not working is probably because can touch maybe? No, that's not it. Hmm. I don't really know why it's not working, but it's just not working. <laughs> so, event on client event if I equals true, then script dot parent dot can collide equals false. It could be because. Um, well, that wouldn't make sense actually. Script dot parent dot can collide equals to false. Let's add a wait and see. Does that work? Well, we'll just see whenever it's done this. We can print value.
Because I think it's the emojis, actually. Yeah, it has to be the emojis. There's no way it's um just doing this for no reason. So, it's not even finding the client, it looks like. Uh, what we can do... Well, we're having trouble doing that, but it's fine, guys. It's just the emojis, um, and it's way too much trouble just to change it. But I was trying to teach you guys that, but it's fine. Um, yeah, that's literally how you do it. Uh, you can have all the ranks and stuff, and you can do cool stuff like that, uh, where you have a leaderboard that shows your name. Also, I'm gonna get. Uh, I might try to make another video on something like this similar where you can make like a group verification system. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.